And welcome back to the Mike Pressler Show here at Blackie's Bulldog Tavern. Mike Mancuso once again joined by the coach of the Bulldogs, Mike Pressler. And coach, very busy week for you guys. Uh, this week's game against Providence marks the actual midpoint of the season. It'll be game number eight. And it begins a four-week stretch in which you have two games during the week for the first time this season. How conditioned and prepared do you think your team is heading into this stretch with multiple games in a week? Well, I told the team uh, prior to the Stony Brook game and, and reminded them more than once, our season will be kind of defined in the next three to four weeks. And um, these Tuesday night games are, are just tough, especially on the road. Uh, short preparation week, um, as, as I tell the players, these are players' games. Mm -hmm. You know, the weekends are kind of the coaches' games because yeah. we got uh, time to prepare. We really don't. I mean, uh, today was a, um, an hour walkthrough at, at Providence College, yeah. uh, kind of show them what they do and, and just counting on Rob Mayrano and our seniors to do a great job getting our guys excited and ready to play. Yeah. Now, although two of the next four games are technically on the road, you don't have to leave the state of Rhode Island, which must be a nice little bonus. Does that play to your advantage at all? Uh, you know, it's it's we call it a high school trip. Yep. You know, it's a, like an evening high school trip, and uh, we dress in our, our own building. We just go over there dressed like we like did in yep. uh, freshman in high school, going down the road to play the next town. So um, not at all. It's uh, I don't think there's necessarily uh, a home field advantage. Yep. You know, um, I think Providence might have the best home field advantage because we play on they play on AstroTurf. Right. And there's very, very few AstroTurf fields left, right. only them in Quinnipiac, you know. So I think that will be a slight advantage for them. Other than that, it's um, uh, that should be an issue. Right. And now the Providence game is actually on Tuesday. This show airs on Thursday, but people will have a chance to watch that game on Cox Sports Television as it will be airing on Friday at seven o'clock. Uh, the game against Providence will be the third all-time meeting. You guys have won the previous two, including last year, 13-6, to where you guys had a big lead at the half. It was 8-1, to and then you guys kind of just went on cruise control. Providence comes into the game at 1-5 on the season this year, 0-2 in Big East play, but they played a very tight game against Georgetown in which they lost 7-6 to at home. Any quick thoughts on this game against Providence? Well, we watched uh, the Georgetown tape um, uh, recently and also saw the Syracuse tape. It was 10-6 to Syracuse. Uh, Providence is a, a vastly improved team from a year ago. Mm -hmm. Coach Burdick is doing a great job. Uh, a lot of young players, a lot of veteran guys, um, kind of sticking to uh, kind of the basics. They don't necessarily give you all the looks they sh they they showed in the past, and and I think that's probably playing to to their benefit. But uh, they're as good as Providence team that I've seen since since I came to Bryant and. Uh, it's going to be a battle tomorrow night. Absolutely. And now another big game on the horizon for you guys this weekend. Saturday at home, Bulldog Stadium, the NEC opener. It's against Sacred Heart. It's a 1 o'clock start. Is there any worry that your team may be looking past this Providence game in anticipation of that Sacred Heart game, or is that not even a factor? Uh, absolutely not. It's um, Each one of these games have a different theme to them. Mm -hmm. You know, Providence being the our local rival, or yep. one of them, um, you know, a couple miles down the road. Uh, there's some excitement about that. Uh, Sacred Heart is our NEC um, yeah. opener, so there'll be a whole different theme about that one. And obviously Brown, anytime we play the Ivy League, yeah. you know, and especially another local game. You know, last year we were fortunate enough to beat Brown and beat Providence and, and win kind of the, the Ocean State Cup. Yeah. So at the end of the day, um, each one of these next three have, have very much a separate but a, an exciting theme to them. So we mentioned it is the NEC opener for both you guys and for Sacred Heart. Is there ever any more importance placed on a conference game than a non-conference game, or do you treat them all the same? Well, I think yes and no. Um, this year, we treat them all the same. Next year, obviously, the AQ kicks yep. in. So it will be much different in, in the spring of 213 than it is in, this, in the spring of 212. But no, we're just, um, we're just trying to build the best um, um, you know, at-large resume yep. that we can. And every one of these games for us basically is an at-large game. Right. And now Sacred Heart on the year, three and five right now. Uh, they've obviously not played any NEC games. They're preseason number five out of six in the NEC, but they did have a big upset over Yale, which was on the road. In which they were down 7-2, and then they went on a 10-1 run. And they've most recently lost to St. John's 13-8. All time, you guys are 3-0 and against them, including last year's 9-7 win. That was on the road down at Sacred Heart. But you were down 4-3 at the half in that game, and you rallied with five goals in the third quarter. What kind of lessons did you take out of that game against Sacred Heart? Uh, that was an absolute torrent, uh, torrential downpour, as worst rain, horizontal rain as I've ever been involved wow. in. And um, you know, we, we played very well. The ball just didn't go in the goal for us till the third quarter. Um, tough road win, uh, quality road win for us. 
and um, I think very much like PC, Sacred Heart, and uh, haven't really taken a hard look at them, but they're, they're better. Right. They're better than they were a year ago. I know they are. Yeah. And now one of the top players for Sacred Heart, Tim Canton, who wears number 17. He's a sophomore midfielder. He was the NEC Rookie of the Year. Very strong on ground balls, very strong on causing turnovers as well. Any uh, particular matchups you worry about him going against you guys? I think he's more dangerous like Mason Poli is in transition as an offensive player. So uh, we've seen some great LSMs um, that have matched up against Max Wiesenberg and others. But uh, at the end of the day, when we get to that one, uh, we'll, we'll figure out a way to to try to limit the plays that he can make yeah. um, that, that could help them and, and hurt us. Yeah. Now on offense, they have a pair of sophomores, Mike Maudsley and Cody Marquise. They've combined for 28 goals already on the season. Any worries about those two players? Great inside shooters uh, from what I've seen. Maudsley, Canadian. Um, uh, Marquise, you know, not the biggest guy in the world, but a great stick around the goal. Those guys will have to be accounted for, for sure. Absolutely. And what type of game are you anticipating against Sacred Heart? Sacred Heart is... Uh, it's like almost like controlled chaos in a way, I think. They get out there and they ride you, they press you, they uh, make you, put you in situations maybe where you're not very comfortable yep. and, and cause turnovers. And uh, it's going to be a game of kind of their will against our will. I yep. mean, they want to play a full field, very hectic, chaotic game. We want to play a little more of a disciplined game. So obviously, uh, We'll see who kind of wins the battle of wills right. this Saturday in Bulldog Stadium. And what do you see as the possible X factor in the game against Sacred Heart? I think, you know, and again, don't know as much about them yet, Mike, mm -hmm. that I know about PC, but know them from the past. You know, we, we just really got to concentrate on what we do. Mm -hmm. and, and I think discipline is the word. I, I mean, the X factor is us staying in our plan and not getting outside of our plan because if we do that's going to benefit Sacred Heart. Absolutely and now the next game on the horizon after Saturday's game against Sacred Heart will be on the road at Brown the second of your two Ocean State Cup games. That one's going to be seven o'clock at Stevenson Field next Tuesday. The all-time series one that you guys aren't winning but you did have the last victory in the series. You guys are now one and two all-time against Brown. Last year very dramatic 8-7 victory at Bulldog Stadium where you're down for nothing early in the game and it looked like Brown might be able to run away with it. All of a sudden, you guys storm back, and Max Wiesenberg scores the last two goals for you guys, and you come out on top 8-7. How much did last year's win over Brown mean for your program? Uh, just in the way we won. You know, to come from four down all the way back, to take the lead, and actually Brown came back at the end, but um, we, we won the game in the middle of the field. We won the game between the lines. Max Wiesenberg, Mason Poli, Trevor Sipoli winning some face-offs. Um, you know, I think that's kind of who we are still in a, yep. in a way, even though we're, we're very new in some other ways. Um, uh, Lars Tiffany, one of, the, one of the best coaches in the Ivy League, one of the best coaches in the country. Yep. And, um, you know, I know they have Duke this week. Yep. They have Princeton at home and their Ivy League opener. Yep. And, um, you know, we both have conference games this week. We both have great non-league games this week. And then um, another one of those Tuesday player games yep. where very little – to done uh, to do preparing wise and and just kind of let the the players decide who's gonna who's gonna win and who's gonna lose. Yeah, and now it winds up being uh, the second straight week that'll have a night game as well. Is there anything more special about playing under the lights than just playing during the day? Especially midweek. I mean, yep. when you play midweek, you want to play under the lights. You know, you get the, a, a much better crowd. You know, people come out after dinner. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's a little more. There's a better atmosphere to it as opposed to playing four o'clock in the afternoon midweek yep. and, and not having you know as many of your parents or many as your fans right. come. And now, what do you think is the most important thing to work on this entire week of practice? I mean, it's a lot of games in a short time. Do you keep those practices at full steam ahead, or do you kind of lay off them a little bit? Well, we, we laid off them today, you know, Monday. It was a hard-fought battle against Stony Brook, gave them Sunday off. Today was like an hour and 15 minutes. We didn't really, today was a mental day. Mm -hmm. um, Wednesday, we'll get after it a little bit after, after Providence. Thursday, uh, back off a little bit. Friday, back off a lot. Yeah. Let the kids get their legs back and, and try to keep that um, structure, that same kind of pace for the next three weeks. Right. Well, Coach, best of luck this entire week. Thanks, a lot Mike. of games coming up. Again, the PC game will air on Friday, 7 o'clock on Cox Sports Television. And then the Bulldogs will be hosting Sacred Heart 1 o'clock at Bulldog Stadium on Saturday before taking on Brown at Stevenson Field at 7 o'clock next Tuesday. Thanks for watching the Mike Pressler Show here on Cox Sports Television.